<laughs> what up, bitches? <laughs> Happy Tuesday. We've got Nina Benina Brown back in the building for Casting Couch Part Nina 2. Nina <laughs> Casting Couch Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> Last time she was a number one hit sensation. So she back, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. We just want her for the views. <laughs> How rude. Uh, do you know what? I was like, we just need some more estrogen in the room. <laughs> Jake does supply Too manly. Some. Jake, Jake supplies some, but I needed a bit more. <laughs> well, we both, yeah. I'm not going to. I need more bitches around me. I was joking. Uh, how's life, kids? How's everyone's week? Good. Weekend. Yeah, man. I'm so not with the loop. I have no idea what we're talking about today. No, but I, I'm feeling <laughs> lost as well, but hey, hey. Um, well. I've got some gossip. So yeah. I did an Push audition it. this week that I can't say what it is because I signed an NDA. Although I don't know if it counts because I didn't even get to do the audition. But basically, I had COVID two weeks ago. Wow, wow, wow. Zero symptoms, but had the Rona. Uh, got to the audition. They make you do a COVID test when you get in the room. Wow, wow, wow. I passed the COVID test when I got in the room. And then I went into the next room and they come back and then they told me, I had a positive test and I had to leave. So even though I already had Rona, so technically you're not allowed to test for 90 days, they wouldn't let me audition for the job, which I'm not going to say what it is. Why are you calling me? I just need to be a little bit closer to the mic, I think. Oh, sorry. I thought you were asking me to come to you. I was like, all right. Come to me. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I need to be closer to the microphone. Yeah, I've just turned it up a little bit. Okay. So I carry on. And um, yeah, so I wasn't allowed to audition. So I drove all the way to London, took the day off work. Queued outside in the cold for the audition, got through, really, really excited. Thought I was going to book it, if I'm being honest. Would have bet definitely a month's salary on that I was going to book it. Didn't get it. So Didn't sad. even get through to get to go into the audition. That's got so sent annoying. home. Sad times. Rome is ruining the world. Message the choreographer. Uh, I've spoke to my agent right. to uh, try and get me seen if I can do a self tape mm. or however. I can take the choreographer on a date, like whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works to get me in. <laughs> what did your agent say? Uh, they were just like he he was dope. He was just it was Royston from R and D. Shout out Royston. He was like, um, just basically, I'm really sorry that happened for you. That happened to you. I'll do all I can to make yeah, it yeah. work. Yeah. And it was a shit situation. It is, and f- like if he can't make it work. You know, I know he would have tried, mm-hmm. yeah. but then I will try myself. Yeah, and I of will course. go direct to the choreographer <laughs> and be like, "Can I take you on a date?" Yeah, <laughs> here's a shirtless selfie. Can I come in? <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, it's not a guy. If it was a gay guy, I reckon that would work. But she's going to be like, "Get out, get out, stop hitting." So yeah, that's my gossip of the week. Can we just bring up the lovely piece of artwork behind you? Yes. Check Ooh. out the new artwork. Shout out to um, Scarlet Cutting, who painted this one. Painted. Painted. This wonderful masterpiece. Basically, she said that she was dope at art, and she showed me a picture. And I was like, make something for my studio. Your studio? Our studio. Pardon? Do you want to take that you one again? Say <laughs> on that yeah. one. <laughs> Rewind. Watch this. Make something for Jake's studio. And then... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, my, my and then, uh, She was like asking me a bazillion questions like what do I want and all this jazz and I was like, I don't care, just do it. And she was like, <laughs> what about it? And I was like, no, what was my rules? I just said no animals. No. No animals and make and it real. no portraits of us. Yeah, yeah, no animals and no <laughs> portraits of us. I mean, I wanted one, but whatever. Orcs. <laughs> then it would be Jake's studio. <laughs> Jake's studio. <laughs> exactly. Jake and Jake's studio. <laughs> um... So I was like, just do something that like represents us, what you think we'll like. Go yeah. for it. Be creative. And I feel like she felt the pressure a little bit because she was didn't want to disappoint. But I, but she did an amazing job. She dude. smashed it. Like she put a pair of like what looks to be like a Jordan 1. A Jordan 1, which is a very good Jordan. I don't actually have a Jordan 1 high top. We could just lie and say it's a high top dunk, which I have. So then it makes sense. But I will get a Jordan 1 high top probably this month just because of this and <laughs> and she put a microphone in the middle of it and she has the font that is like the actual Mate, she font she smashed the font it's so good yeah and it's just dope and I actually really enjoyed this little split a splat around it mm. I don't know the correct word for that but split a splat that's splat splat technical, right. technical, technical terms, terms. yeah because I was an artist it's dope shout out to Scarlett so she replaced our shit neon sign so this is the new backdrop yeah Thanks. I was tempted to get it um, it's called resin where it's like a shiny coat that you put over the top of it i'm tempted to do that but we'll come back to that another day we're well, gonna ruin her work no can you imagine it just makes it like glow because it shine I'm, i don't know how that works but okay i'll show you I, something after. i trust you <laughs> but let's not fuck it up no yeah uh, we need to get a, her to put her Sign name it. not her name but like her signature by here just so if anyone ever tries 
if she's rich and famous one day. We can sell her for shit. Like that. I mean, mm. sorry, claim that we own it. <laughs> 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 yeah, so shout out to Scarlett. Very, very grateful. If anyone else wants to draw us stuff, it can join the wall as well, but it has to be good. <laughs> I'll draw a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> no, no portraits. <laughs> Unless you can't be here, we can just put it there so that people will yeah. always think you're here. A cut out of Nina. A cut out of Nina Benina Brown. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, so that's my week. Lovely. What have you been doing? What have I been doing? Uh, I've had quite a quiet week. Um, nothing overly exciting. Me and Nina filmed a lovely video quite recently. Yes, we which did. Which we'll be putting up within the next few days, I'm yeah. sure. Casting couch? Not casting couch. Oh, no, dancing. it was a Lucas McFarlane combo. Oh, nice. Um, very emotional or very full out? Emotional. More emotional. Mm. Yeah. It was lovely. Did the you light. wear one sock? No, I didn't. Then it's not <laughs> a Lucas I had no sock. <laughs> then it's not a Lucas McFarlane combo. <laughs> Yeah, and then obviously we had training program. We did, which was the best feeling ever mm. on so Sunday. So good to be back. Like, I taught all day Friday, which was cool. And then I taught all Sunday morning, which was cool. And I was fucked by the time the program was about to start. I was so <laughs> tired. We started doing the first bit of the warm up, and I was like, I do not have this in me. <laughs> and I don't know, it's just like the dance spirit took over. <laughs> And like, I don't know, it just felt like such a nice energy in the room. Like, I don't know, I just, I really loved it this Sunday. Mm. I, I especially after having a month of not doing it. Mm. Yeah. It was like, it, it was just what I needed. Absolutely. And like, everyone was killing the drills and stuff. Like, it was dope. Especially you, Jake. That's the best I think I've ever seen you do drills. Oh, yeah. I, I, think I'd, I had a air of confidence to me yesterday do you think it's because <laughs> do you think it's because you weren't thinking about filming stuff and you just just like relaxed and danced um i think i think about this in detail yesterday and i think last week i had quite a few challenges in my working life and i think and what i realized i was experiencing the same level of angst of angst like anxiety oh. sort of thing <laughs> with <laughs> something that was very uh, <laughs> lol <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, with something that was very challenging in my business world which threatened a lot of my work and I was experiencing the same level of anxiety in a dance class which yeah. makes no sense because I'm not even trying to be a professional dancer or whatever so it's like I kind of realised why am I experiencing the same thing in a dance class environment versus a, a business problem Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I kind of snapped myself and had a conversation with myself and I was like, oh, you just, uh, yeah, words. When it's you have a conversation with yourself, do you speak or do you think? Think. Oh, In think. my head. I'm I not talk, that no, well, Sometimes I talk to myself. Do you? Yeah. I think most, more people talk to themselves more than we talk about it. Everyone talks to themselves. Like sometimes I generally do, like, I'll, like, especially if I'm in the car and there's no one around, I will speak to myself. Really? Like sometimes. a full on? No, not like a full on conversation. <laughs> I don't answer my own question like out loud. <laughs> I say sometimes like, come on, Jay, let's go. I say something like, yeah, like, like, stuff like, like that, like do you know what I mean? A little pep talk. Yeah. Like, like, stop being like, a bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Normally, it's like stop being a bitch or like, come on, Ginge, you got this. <laughs> or I'll be like, figure it out. Like I'll say like little things to myself. But yeah, sorry. But yeah, no, I, I just guess I found like I was being so silly about the way I was behaving and like my emotional emotions in class were just totally blown out of proportion. Yeah. So I was, yeah, I, I feel like I've found a new confidence in that no you're dope especially when we were doing like the loose leg uh exercise mm -hmm. like across the room and then i stood in front of you and i was like let's go and you're like stop fucking distracting me <laughs> <laughs> fucking distracting the life so angry me. so stop fucking not distracting <laughs> me. Like, whoa not angry i wanted to be like i am your teacher <laughs> the force is strong with you it is no, no man, I, felt, I felt good i felt really good Sunday. you look really confident well. like the yeah. most confident i've seen you look in a very long time mm, I, I definitely am um, Felt the most confident I've yeah. ever felt. Just and I just feel want. like I've improved quite a lot of the last six months. Which yeah. Is obviously yeah. down to you. Um, well, no, to the aid of you. It's not down to me. It's down to you for putting in the work. Um, did you see Luke? The, the new blonde mm. kid. Blonde kid? With the so good. Bruh. So like, much texture in his movement. Mm. Doing the drills. Like, he's a first year at Wilkes. <laughs> 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 um, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I remember the first time I taught them and I always do like the like cross step heel toe exercise like whatever um, just so, to see what they're like with weight transfers and I remember seeing him doing the first time and being like oh, there's an angel <laughs> like <laughs> where am I <laughs> like you're like I don't even need to teach you like 
you can just do it. This is a miracle. Oh. And then like when like, you know, he's all, he's a great dancer, but then even putting the concepts on top, like try and think about using your knees, then your hips, then your ribs on each one. Mm. Like he did it in such a nice way. I was like, oh my God. Mm. Do you like, know his background? Uh, white British. <laughs> <For sake. laughs> no. As I'm, in like, do you know his? No. I know, I know he's done like house before and hip hop and stuff. Mm. Sure. But like, I, I don't know where he's trained in that. I've not really had a chance to mm. sit down and chat. But I remind me this week, actually, I'd love to like actually pick his brain mm. and see who mm. taught him before. Because they, so des- they des- whoever taught him deserves credit, man. Mm. Like, he is dope. Really dope. I know it was a fun week. It was a fun Sunday. And I enjoyed the combo. It was a bit commercially for Absolute me. Absolute tune. Mm. It was a tune. Did you know what song it was before it played? No. No. Scarlet. I, I always Scarlet try and figure it. out because, like, it had like a car driving at the beginning. I can usually like pick out songs yeah. with like weird sound effects. But, but the, no. the, that's not on the original one. I ripped the audio from the music video. Ah. So that's why the car is at the yeah. beginning because the the section that I wanted isn't in the actual track. You know, the kickball chain section. Mhm. Mhm. That that part of the song isn't on the. The one on iTunes and Spotify oh, and stuff. No, that's the music video version. Right. So I ripped that audio and then chibbity chopped it and put it all into the audio. Chopped. Chibbity <laughs> chopped it. To put it all into the order I wanted. So that's why, like, if you're all going to practice it, now you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. That no, was nice. It was, really it was fun super combo. fun. And then I got home and I was like, you know, you like your adrenaline is so high. Mm-hmm. That I just couldn't relax. Mm. Right. I was like, so just like, oh, it was so good. Like, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about like, Thinking about people, that's weird. Thinking about like what people sh- did well on and what people need to work on and that. And then you're like, oh, I've got to be up at 5 a.m., go to sleep. And I just yeah. couldn't sleep. One of them. Good Sunday, though. It was a really nice, nice class environment. Nice really to be good. back. We got Cisco back on s- next week. Next nice. Teaching. Because nice. Lisa can't do it. So, Cisco Gomez, Colombo. Mm. Oh, also, the audition. <laughs> Cisco is at the audition. And, uh, you know when I was speaking about um, on the episode about what people wear to auditions? Yeah. So I was outside with like, uh, there was a couple of us fossils there. It was like me, Cisco. <laughs> <Fossil>. <laughs> a couple of us old people. Me, Cisco, Josh Warmby, uh, Philip Birchall. Don't mean to call you guys fossils, but like just older, <laughs> like not like straight out college kids. Uh, Tom Clark, Kalechi, like some, some OGs in the building. Uh, and then uh, Josh Warmby was like, your podcast is so accurate. And I was like, what? He went, look at everyone in their gym clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was laughing. And then uh, I was like, yeah, I was like, I didn't really know what to wear to fit the brief, which obviously we can't talk about. But mm-hmm. I was like, so I just thought I'll go with like just a pair of jeans so you look not like a chav and just a plain black top. So there's no reference. They can't go, you look like a something. It's yeah, just, yeah. It is yeah. what it is. And Cisco was like, oh, I've got outfit. And I was like, show me. And he showed me his outfit. And oh my God, he was dressed for the job. Right. Like, he was in full on costume underneath his big coat. Really? Yeah, took it off. I'll show you a photo after this. Uh, yeah. I want to say what it but is, but I'm afraid that that'll go against the yeah. NDA. Yeah, yeah. But like, like it oh. was epic. And I was like, I love you. <laughs> if you were walking down the street and that, people would throw shit at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so much commitment. Have you spoken to Cisco since the audition? Yes. Did you hear, how did it, can we say anything about how it went? Uh, I believe he got through, like he he had to go and do a fitting after it, which is always a good sign. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean he has to do a fitting? He's already got the costume on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was good. So yeah, nice interesting. One. But again, lots of people in gym clothes. Mm. Like I saw someone wearing red Adidas tracksuit bottoms. You know, like the yeah. old school Adidas red ones. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, come on, bro. like, this ain't a rude eye class. Like, <laughs> do you get that reference? What'd you say? No, it's I not don't. a rude eye class. No. Do you get the reference? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Dancers, you'll get it. Jake Punk. <laughs> just Go on, explain the reference. Just a producer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a producer. It's just a producer. I can two step pretty well. In his own, <laughs> doing LV. In his own <laughs> studio. Um, he, uh, rude eye is an agency, or it used to be an agency, and right. a dance class, and they used to always want you to wear really bright, like out their clothes so you gotcha. have like colorful adidas pants mm-hmm. on with like long stripy socks and a different color thing to, and their thing was like it made you stand out they kind of created their own little like fashion mm-hmm. it, it was cool it worked you did look like a packet of skills right. but 
you know, it worked. Were they, they it. LA or UK? No, no, no. here. Yeah. Gotcha. At, at the pine of the apple. At the pine of the pine apple. Of the pine the of the apple. apple. Yeah. So that's uh, that's all the gossip I've really got. Yeah. Nina, how was your week? It's all right. You know. It wasn't, was it? It was shit. Well, yeah. <laughs> but we carry on. We we push on. I'm you can fighting. tell them. Go on. Tell the world. Tell the world sad times. What is fucking the government doing to your life? Go on. Ruining my job. But it's fine. Taking her fucking job away. <laughs> Disgusting. But you Disgusting. Know, now we just get more auditions. Move on. More auditions. More auditions. More, more hustling. Auditions. More research. That's we're right. finding people, networking. No, actually, this is a good thing to talk about because we were kind of talking about it. I'm sorry if I'm throwing you under the bus and you don't want to. It is what it is. <laughs> you haven't signed an NDA for, <laughs> for Thriller. And even if you have, they wouldn't check up on it. Um, <coughs> they've underpaid for the past 10 years. They can't complain. <laughs> um, so basically, the Thriller tour obviously was meant to go to Germany because of the restrictions in Germany. They, they cancelled the German leg. And now they're saying because they can't make that date happen, it's not worth them doing the tour. So basically, they've pulled the entire tour until the foreseeable future when it's possible. I mean, that doesn't mean you'll never do it again, but it means that you're just not going to do it on this run. And when mm -hmm. they come back up, you know, they've said that they'll come back and hopefully you can make paths match again. And we were kind of talking about it and it's a real shit situation to be mm -hmm. in, especially it's something you're super excited about. And I only want to talk about it because, you know, listeners might be going through something similar because this is happening yeah. to a lot of people that mm. covid is oh, like yeah. taking people's jobs away like bring it on just being cancelled early like there's lots of things happening and i said you know it's it is so shit but at least it's better than being in that that being in a lingo where it's like oh it's gonna happen just when or like this tour date to happen we're gonna reschedule it because then you're yeah. just left in a loop and you're not trying to pursue something else. It's almost like you're unsure of next steps that are going to happen and you think you need a backup. Yeah. Just in case. But you're also trying to hold on to that bit of hope yeah. that it's going to work. Whereas at least now you can go, cool, if that does come back, I'm going to get asked for it. Now I can take my eggs out of that basket and work on the next thing. Mm. Yeah. Because otherwise you're always going to have like in the back of your mind like, oh, Say, like, you want to book a holiday. You'll always have that, oh, I don't know, because this I might happen. Or, yeah. or I want to go for this job. I'd rather do Thriller, but I want a job. But then if I commit to that and Thriller starts, you'll miss it. Like, do you know what I mean? I it, know, like, it's such a... It puts you in that position where you're always going, oh, but what what if? Yeah. So at least that's kind of now you can keep moving forward, but in a direction without having to look back. You know yeah. what I mean? To try and put a positive twist on a really shit situation. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. And do you know how many other shows are being how many other shows are being cancelled? Uh, all I know is that Bring It On was finished early. Yeah, the, is that the, the, their last week this week? I think. Yeah, they're not doing the tour. They're leg. not doing the rest of the tour. And then I don't know what other productions has happened to. I know it did at the beginning of COVID, mm -hmm. like happened to loads. Like yeah, Justin Bieber's tour got cancelled. Mm -hmm. Like they don't. They were they were going in in like a week, and it got cancelled. Like his entire world tour, like Dream Boys tour, got cancelled. Like because of COVID. I don't, I'm just surprised that they're still cancelling stuff when we're on the, I feel like we're on the way out. Well, yeah. I heard, the other day, and this could be bullshit, is that we're going into normal times now. Yeah, like, as in they're taking they're all restrictions, restrictions away. Yeah, so but they're not in Germany. Yeah. But to me, like, I, I can understand that. I was, we were trying to debate of why the Germany thing. I was like, surely tour for the next nine months in the UK and then try and organise Germany at the end of it. Yeah, but they they might, they might make I mean, more, I don't know what I'm talking about. They so. might make more money in Germany and that's where it covers the costs for it to run in the UK. Yeah, I mean, we were debating it. Like, I was saying that maybe it's all the income. So I did X, um, I can't talk this morning. I'm not with it. The money going out, for example, like rehearsal time, like how much it costs to create the stage, blah, 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 blah. blah. Like, is it all the background stuff rather than the daily outgoings that mm. stops it being profitable because i yeah. can't imagine you making more money in germany than england but it's just, just the volume of shows well, that they have yeah, to well do. it could be like it depends what theaters like not every theater is the same so some theaters you go to and like they only hold a hundred like say a thousand people and some will hold two thousand people mm. some will hold 400 people so you know your profit in a bigger theater is going to be better and also maybe it's the demand like so there's we've had thriller in the uk for 15 years or whatever it is in the west end so maybe right. the demand might not be as high gotcha whereas in germany they don't got thriller so maybe the demand, demand is more so maybe they can charge more for a ticket right 
do you know what I mean? Like, we yeah, don't know. Yeah. Maybe they know that their sales are better in Germany than they are here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's the yeah. same as, like, you know, like, you're more likely to make money in a dance class in London than Cardiff. Like... Yeah, because the pool's mm-hmm. there. Because yeah. there's more people that might want to take... Might want to dance there. Mm-hmm. Same, you know? There's more options for shows here. Maybe that goes against it as well. Maybe there's less options out there. So more people want to go and see it. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. No, hard. Um, so sorry, Nina Benina Brown. Yeah. We Tough move times. forward. But we you're going to be smashing it next yeah. six months. Hell yeah. We keep passing. <laughs> we keep passing, we baby. Passing. We've booked you today. Look, there you go. Yeah, we go. <laughs> so let's change the topic onto something more positive. Yeah. So this one uh, is inspired by L. Taylor. So what is, is L. Taylor third year? Mm. Technically fourth, but yeah. Technically fourth. Yeah. But so like still in college. Summon like I, I can't help but watch her in awe. What makes her such a good student? I'm not saying what she does necessarily like during class. Like what do you think she's done? And this will be in a much longer context in a minute to make her stand out the way she does in class environment. Uh I, the first thing that I think of is like, w- look at her position in the room from the very jump. Mm-hmm. Like, where does she stand? Right at the front. Yeah. Right by you. Right? Literally off my shoulder. So she's in a position where she doesn't miss a detail. Mm-hmm. She puts herself at the forefront of the room. So she's not going to miss a detail. She's not going to learn it third hand from someone's foot because you can't see mine at the back of the room. She already sets herself up for success in a good position yeah. you know what I mean like to me that's already a, a win the downside if some people like not everyone can do that because I think if you're not good at picking up you don't want to be the person off the teacher's shoulder going down in flames every time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or making mistakes because then you're going to fuck up the whole room but actually because she's such a talented dancer like she can be there and she'll get it but she won't miss a detail yeah. so that already helps her and sets her up to be in a good position because she's at a level where she can pick up and she can see everything what she's really really good at is she takes detail she takes instruction which every dancer should right Mm -hmm. like if i say i want your arm to go here she does it but what she does if you know when i watch how she learns if i say i just want your arm to be like this but i don't give a detail about a hand or i don't give a detail about a body angle or a foot she, I believe, scans up and down to see what's going on. And she copies exactly angle for angle and shape for shape. Mm-hmm. You don't need to give her every single detail for her to take on the information yeah. that's needed. Sure. Which is a, you know, that's like what I do. Like I can watch a video and normally get it pretty damn accurate because you're scanning and you're mm-hmm. taking in information. Whereas a lot of dancers need to be told, I want your arm to do this and I need your hand like this or I need your head like this. Whereas she just watches how you do it and does it. And then yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, ideally ready to be a professional dancer. That's your job. Mm-hmm. Like that's what everyone should be striving towards is that you can just watch and scan up and down and then take on the information. I always say, use the example, you know, like when you go in an airport and you have to do this and the scanner goes up and down to see if like the metal detector and I always tell him I've got an iron leg. And I go, you didn't detect my metal leg. <laughs> like, <laughs> just stupid shit to make them laugh. Um, they never laugh, do they? No, never. <laughs> they, they have got a really fucking shit job watching everyone about to go and have a really good time. Yeah. All day. <laughs> like, <laughs> and uh, I think that she learns like that. I think that she's constantly scanning. So she takes in every bit of information. Hmm. And then what she's really good at is not only taking in the information, but taking in, say you teach it, and then I'll always go, just watch me do it once so you understand like the timing. Mm-hmm. And when I say you understand the timing, I mean I want you to understand the musicality, but also the delivery, mm-hmm. like where a texture is, where a dynamic is. And what she does is she takes in that reference of how you've delivered a specific texture and she matches it. Like, whereas a lot of people take in all the steps, but they're not trying to deliver it with the same execution that you are. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying it needs to be identical, so it's boring, but we need to be telling the same stories. We need to be, if we're both finding a specific texture in a place or we're both slowing down in a way, like Mm. we want to match, so we're telling the same story. And she does things like that without having to tell her. And I think that's what kind of 
makes her a really good learner. Like mm-hmm. she learns really well because she's aware of all this stuff. And then the quality of her movement is so lovely mm-hmm. because she's, you know, she's a trained dancer. She can do technical stuff. She can, you know, she might not be a prima ballerina, but she has a good understanding. She might be, I don't know. But like she <laughs> has a good understanding of technique and all the different foundations. Mm-hmm. So I think that helps with then the movement quality as well as just how she learns. Because like I said on Sunday, like there was a few times I looked and I wanted to give her a correction. And I was like, no, don't, don't get like, she doesn't need help. Like she's past where I can go. This this needs to be there because mm. in five times of watching it, I think she'll get it. She'll get it. Yeah. yeah. So I purposely wasn't giving her corrections just to see if she matched on. Mm-hmm. And normally in class with her, I always dance it next to her because with lots of students or lots of dancers, like you know, I want to give corrections, but sometimes you can't give someone notes and corrections until they know what's going on mm-hmm. because yeah. they're already thinking about what they're meant to be doing as opposed to thinking about how they're doing it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't think about how am I doing this sometimes if you don't even know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sometimes you have to let people just maybe not do the best job, but take in all the information, and then we can polish and refine the information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You know? But with Elle, I always dance it next to her and be like, push, meet me, try and dance me. I didn't do that once on Sunday on purpose mm-hmm. because I wanted to see if she would just be able to match it because I was trying to create, like, a stage piece. It wasn't loads of details, and it wasn't super, like... um class combo it was quite stagey mm-hmm. it was quite big shapes there were some quick moments but on the grand scheme of things it wasn't that difficult it was just a lot of con a lot of information lot to of take information. in lot of a long combo mm-hmm. um and she just matched it perfectly and that's why like at the end of class i made a point of it going watch she will do every single thing i've said to do but i've not given one instruction the whole lesson mm-hmm. and yeah. that's what i think makes her such a great dancer um and her notes were like when she first started the program, me and John Graham both said the same thing. Like, she's a really nice dancer. She was really nice, but we just wanted to do that extra bit more. She was always like playing safe. And I really feel like the last few months, she started to not play safe as much and she's going for it a bit more. So what would unsafe be? Uh, not step. the right wording, but like, what, what's the extra uh, factor? Step, travel further jump higher gotcha pick your leg up more so like yeah. bigger movement yeah if that bit feels easy how are you gonna like make it a bit better how are you gonna give it that little bit something more instead of just using your torso a little bit try and use it a little bit more mm-hmm. depending on mm. what the what i'm asking for you like if it's a level change use more of a level change gotcha like push your boundaries a little bit further to see how you can explore moving better you know and, and she's really started to do that like for me now she should be a working dancer mm-hmm like so i this might not be a question that you can you just tap the thing um this might not be one forward might not be a question that you can answer do you think she's doing anything outside of class that's boosting her ability in class like is she going uh, outside sorry. of my class or outside of class in general i think like, outside of the college environment like do you know if she's taking extra classes like is i she... have no idea okay cool but i know that so, she takes like five classes a day gosh gotcha. i mean because she's in college yeah which brings me on to my next question do you what do you think a dancer should be doing outside of a college environment to boost their training to the maximum i would say you need to be doing your research. Like, you need to be looking at, uh, you need to be looking at dance, but not on TikTok. (laughs) Like, you need to be looking at dance. Like, look at the people ahead of you. Look at the people that are doing the things you want to do. If you want to dance for J-Lo, then you should be looking at J-Lo's dancers and going, what do they have that I don't? Mm -hmm. Who are they? Find the reference. Oh, Jimmy Smith. Like, what does he do? What's his training? What's his background? Why did he get that job? Like, that's what I would be doing. Like, so my whole, you know, I didn't have really social media trying to be a professional dancer. I would just find out who dancers are that were working and go and take the classes they took. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That was my only reference I had. But I would try and figure out what skills they possess or what skills I need to get on those jobs. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to always be the, the working commercial dancer, but I knew that I needed to be more than just dance. So I was like, cool, I need to be doing tricks and all these different things. And then I'd be like, cool, what jobs can that get me? 
know what I mean? Like, just do your research for for what you want to do. I think that's the biggest thing that people probably don't do. Yeah. Like, when you're in college, I think you're so focused on just becoming just a good there, dancer and just, like, going in, going out, taking your steps. When you leave, you're not you're not doing anything else. Maybe but thinking about college. Yeah. Like, I feel like when you're in college or in your training, you're so wrapped up in that, like, am I going to be in the move at peace? Or... Like yeah. this person picked me out in their class. It's your be all and end all, and you don't look any further than that graduation day. Right. Like yeah. that, or that's where you're. You don't think about anything further than that. Whereas if it was me, I would be saying to people like, "Do your research. Who's choreographing what? Are they teaching on Saturday somewhere? Go and take it. Start building that relationship now. Start networking from the jump. And networking is such a controversial thing because people be like, "Oh, I'm shit at networking. I can't be a kiss ass." Networking isn't kissing ass. No. It can no. be. If you make like, it can be if you make it. It can be if you go up to them and be like, "Oh my god, that was amazing. Thank you so much." Like then, yeah, like if you can be a bit of a kiss ass, or if you tell them every time. But networking can be just showing up to their class, and if you show up regularly enough, they'll remember you, yeah. and they'll know who you are. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Like, like we're back. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's what I think. So like, there's a girl that used to do the program. Her name's Danny Cash. She used to do when mm. it was in Birmingham. She, her dream is to be a professional dancer and she is a good dancer, you know? And uh, her hero is Bryony Albert. Oh, but she's, like, that well, is she her, was working with her. That is her hero. So every time Bryony Albert teaches in London, Danny is there. Everything Bryony does, Danny is there. Now Bryony has hired Danny for Dancing with the Dancing, dancing, with, no, on, dancing ice. on Ice for like the past two shows. Really? Like, <laughs> that's networking. Mm. You just show up. You show up and put in your all. Yeah. Like, it might not happen right away, but it might happen over time. Like, if you did my program every single month, like, I, I might not be, I might not really know you at the beginning, but by the end, I'll know you. Yeah. And that's networking. Mm -hmm. And then if something comes along, I'm going to choose you because you're the forefront of my mind. Like, that can be networking. Yeah. Those are the things that I think are missed out in college. Like, are you researching about what you want to do? Not in college from the colleges. It's not that they're yeah, stopping yeah. that. But I think the students or dancers don't think about it what they can do I think outside also like an aspect it's not asking for things in a in a nice way in the right way because like to find those opportunities like people you know ask if you can shadow them or have experience with them and get that because i think a lot of people are too shy to ask people these days because they're like if i ask them like it's gonna look like i'm too like peggy. wanting everything <laughs> Too peggy or something yeah but if you don't take the opportunity you might miss out on something don't ask don't get yeah don't simple ask, as yeah. but like if i've if you've taken my class once and then you go can i oh, shadow you yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> no there's too yeah. soon to yeah, ask yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but if you've invested build that relationship if you've invested yeah, lots of time and built that relationship like if you ask me to shadow me after you know i've known you for three four years i go of course you can no brainer do you know what I mean? Like, there's a relationship there. Yeah. But if I've just met you, no, bitch, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even give you a nickname yet. Like, <laughs> like I've earned the title you haven't got now. a panina. <laughs> you haven't got a panina brown at the end yet. Um, something obviously you graduated. You being Nina, obviously. Um, that is my name. <laughs> <laughs> you graduated last year. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. You did a lot of work outside of college. Oh, yeah. Now, I think one thing I want to bring up is your morning routine, which you did for the last oh, six yeah. months of... Of third year. Of, yeah. Do you want to dive into that a little bit? Because I, I think I'll that gave you the ass. last six months. Because you were on fire <laughs> for like was six months. I was on it. Yeah. So, I think go on, over to you. As long as you brushed your teeth in this, that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I did. That Good. was part of my routine. Good. <laughs> um, so, I read a book called The 5 a.m. Club yeah. by Robin Sharma. Uh -huh. I was quite into my into my reading back then i need to get back on that um but so i read this book 5 a.m club basically the idea of it is you wake up at 5 a.m you do 20 minutes of exercise whatever that might be for you then 20 minutes of like time for yourself so whether i did like journaling or meditation and then uh, and then the last 20 minutes is um like a new skill or like gaining knowledge. So either that would be listening to a podcast or 
Duolingo because I loved it and it was like a quick like just easy thing just like learning a bit of a new skill so that's like the first hour of your day you've you've kicked ass already mm. you've exercised you've done something for your mind and you're gaining knowledge so I like my day had already started in a good light whereas if people would have just gotten out of bed and then they're like 20 minutes on their phone in college like they're, they've just woken up and they're mm. straight into college whereas like I've had that time to like get my mindset right get ready for the day mm. I was that annoying positive person every morning coming in the changing room like hey guys let's go <laughs> let's start the morning everyone else like, oh. I was like oh, Nina <laughs> shut up <laughs> But yeah, I f like it really, it really set me in a good light. So like the last six months of third year, I felt like, yeah, let's do, go. Do you feel like that changed your college day? Yeah, absolutely. In what ways? I f even though I was waking up so early, I felt more energized. Mm. I also went to bed really early, didn't I? Mm. <laughs> I'm literally like, I'm going to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nine o'clock. Yo, that's the key. To, like, it's felt so funny because like Kobe Bryant, like he always says it, like he said it. Like, go to bed early. Like, wake up early. Mm. Like, you'll be better for it. You'll get better sleep. Like, like it was weird how energized I felt. I do think as a dancer, it's quite hard to do that. Um, once you graduate, I should say. Because it depends mm -hmm. on your lifestyle. Like, sometimes, like, you know, if you're working... If you're a dancer and you're, like, a podium dancer and you work night gigs. Like, in mm. LA, I didn't finish work till, like, 1 a.m. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I'd get home at 2 a.m. I'd wake up at 6 or 7 a.m. And then I'd sleep again in the day. Yeah. So I'd do my early morning, go for a like morning walk. I'd go to the gym, I'd do yoga and I'd hike. And I'd do my laundry. I'd do everything before 12 o'clock. Yeah. And then I'd probably sleep like one till two or one till three. And then I'd go and take class. You know? Yeah, I think it's adapting to your, as you said, if you're, if you're going to bed at one in the morning, waking up at five in the morning doesn't make any sense. No. But I think the, the takeaway is, is you were looking after your routine i think and habits you were is so up. important oh. you were building I, habits i Absolutely. was i was building those habits and like it really has an effect on your day-to-day -day life whatever mm. habits you do oh, like for sure absolutely yeah I, I was probably eating a lot healthier back then as well <laughs> well yeah <I> think, <laughs> probably we can blame the thing Christmas is, for that. I, I, well, it's like when you're tired like you're gonna become sloppy in other areas like eating and stuff like that you'll make shitter choices yeah like i know i make sh way shitter choices like on a monday because i leave my house at 5 a.m and i get mm. home at like nine i know i have shit eating choices that day because mm. i'm just fucking pooped <laughs> well so I, of food obviously we'll be doing a nutrition episode next week so we'll dive more into that oh is it next week i yeah. think it's next week oh actually. sweet we've got two episodes next week exciting you don't know that but i'm just told okay <laughs> <laughs> two guests next week two guests next yeah. week. yeah nice who's the first Can well let's not just say just okay. case we'll get often. <laughs> um, but no like i think that does like when i'm tired i make shit choices mm -hmm. like a hundred percent like last night i was so tired driving home i just stopped saw a subway got a foot long i was like let's go Whereas if I got home, I'd have had some like meat and veg. Yeah, good food. Or mm. something like that. You know, like I know Subway's not, you know, not just the worst. A, just a mm. <laughs> like a roll with some fucking meat. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's not unhealthy. It's not McDonald's, but it's not as healthy as it could be. Mm. And then on my lunch, like I said, I had a millionaire shortbread. But <laughs> 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 that's shit. But I think, yeah, when you're tired, I think you make sloppier choices all around. Like with everything. Yeah. It's also, I think... It's discipline mm. and making that happen because I was, I was so disciplined in myself back then. I was like, no, you're going to bed at nine. I don't care. I don't care what's going on in the group chat. Like if it's kicking off, mm. put your phone away and go to bed because you need the sleep. Mm. You need to get that into gear. Discipline is the most underrated thing in the entire <laughs> world. Like I, I'm, I'm still disciplined on the scale of humanity, but like, I'm nowhere near it. Like, me at 25 would look at me in 31 and be like, you're a fucking hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> like, sort your shit out. Like, I would never have drank alcohol. I would never have had sugar. Like, and by sugar, I mean like chocolate or sweets mm -hmm. or like shit food. I would have had fruit. But like, I would never have laid until 10, 10 o'clock. Like, never. I'd be up. I'd be out. I'd never, ever make a sloppy choice on food. Mm. Like, because it was like my job was on the line. Yeah. Like it's me or someone else. And if that put, if that gave me the edge over the person next to me, that tiny bit of discipline every day got me the dream job. I, I was down for that cause. Whereas now I'm not. 
but I should be. Mm. Yeah. You know? Why do you feel like you should be still? Because I know it'll, I know it'll benefit me overall as a, on, on a health aspect, mm -hmm. on a, a aspect of my days will be better. I'll feel more energized and stuff like that. But also then when I was that disciplined and I think we've touched on it before, I, I didn't have a great social life. I didn't enjoy social times very much. Whereas now it's like, I want to get home and sit on the sofa with my fiance after mm -hmm. a long day. And I want us to have a share a bottle of wine and watch a nice program. Yeah. And if we're up till 11 o'clock having a bottle of wine, that's a, maybe a physical sacrifice, but it's an emotional gain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a you trade off. Know, like it's a trade off. Mm -hmm. The the positive is I've had an emotional connection. We've done something lovely together as opposed to getting in from work at nine o'clock and being like, I'm going to bed now. Yeah. And yeah. I'm leaving again at 5 a.m. Our relationship then sacrificed, like suffers. Yeah. So I think it's about finding the right balance mm -hmm. of how to do it. Like I never used to eat carbs or chocolate on Christmas Day. And I used to go to the gym. I know you still do go to the gym on Christmas Day. Ooh, yeah. But I used to go to the gym <laughs> on Christmas Day. And I... Like now I look back at it and I know why I was doing it because I wanted to always be ready and always have the edge. And I was so afraid of letting it slip that I wouldn't be able to pull it back. But like I look back and I go, wow, when all my family was sat around the sofa having a good time, like laughing, I would go to the gym. Or whilst we're all sharing, like everyone's having alcohol and getting a bit giggly and having fun, I wouldn't and I'd be like this. <laughs> like, And I'm not yeah. contributing to the social aspect of having a good time. Whereas like, you know, those things are so important. It's it's hard because I've like I've felt like that like in like mm. in my moment right now I feel especially like when I graduated and I was like auditioning and like just trying to get out there and get mm. everything together like I was making a lot of sacrifices for like family events or like other things because to get to the like position that I wanted to be in those sacrifices had to be to. made yeah for sure. And I think that's also something that people might not necessarily realize about like our career. Oh, definitely. For the first six years of mine and George's relationship, no one thought I existed because I never used to go to family parties, never go to family events. I'd never be at birthdays. I'd never go and see like her family stuff because I'd be working or training or they'd be like, oh, we're all going to go to the pub. I'd be like, sick, I'm going to the gym. <laughs> like because i was really trying to chase something and trying yeah. to achieve something and like that didn't meet up with my your values didn't match. my values of yeah. what i needed at the time whereas now it's different because you know I, in the next few years i want to have a family i want to settle down i want to i still want to work hard and i still want to chase all this yeah. stuff but at the same time i don't need to be conscious about being shirtless on stage yeah. so that's one stress that's been taken away where i can all the effort that went into making sure I look peeled at all times. I don't need to think like that anymore. I can go, do you know what? I can actually just go and enjoy myself instead mm. of going to the gym because I don't need to go to the gym today. Mm. I'll just make sure I am consistent and go a few times a week instead of twice a day. Yeah. And being too extreme, you know? Mm -hmm. Would you say that kind of reading back to the whole being a, a better student, is there anything else that springs to mind that, you think would create a better college experience as a st student working towards becoming a professional dancer? You answer. You've just left college. Because I, 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 feel, I feel like you were a really good student. Like, look like at the you're always on time. You're always... Okay, they, here, here's one. You were always on time. Like, I hate And you actually stepped away from other it people. It really bugs me. Even, like, there was... Like, even on Zoom, like, if the connection was bad and I was late, I was like this... <laughs> like, Freaking good. I hate it. Because if you were late for me, I'd fire you. Like mm. 15... I've been late a few times on jobs. And it was the scariest thing in the world. For me, it was like actual pure... Heart and mouth. Ah, uh, the scariest yeah. thing ever. It's like on time is late. Yeah. And some people are late every day. <laughs> like, that's what blows my mind. Some people are late for everything they do. Yeah, I, I hate think... those people. <laughs> I hate those people. Also, I hate those people. like I had I the mindset today, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of... Like, you only have three years of full-on training. So I was like, you've got to take every session mm. in in both hands and take it on because, especially, like, because we had lockdown and then once, once we all got into third year, I think everyone kind of had this, 
like hit of oh my god we've only got a few months left mm. we've had like a year taken technically, away technically you're still a first year <laughs> like we've had a year taken away from not being in the studio and being on zoom mm. like we're counting down the months like you've got to take every class and i feel sometimes that doesn't hit you until third year when mm. you need to think that in first year because mm. if you have that you're gonna have a completely different journey of growth compared to if you think about that just in third year and you realize, oh, damn it, it's ending. Mm. Are you are you quite, well, I know the answer to this, but are you quite <laughs> forward thinking in terms of your behaviors now and how that affects your your situation later? Like for example, like you were always super on time with like homework and that sort of thing. You were never like last minute Larry. Hell no. You know Absolutely I mean? not. <laughs> Which is like what 95% of the population is, is they always do things. So, again, do you have a mindset where you're preemptive about the, your experiences later? I, yeah, I guess. I think I just, I don't know. I'm quite, I'd, I'd hate things being last minute. It stresses me out. And I just, I like. <laughs> What's Larry? that face game? Last minute you're last minute Larry. <laughs> <laughs> last minute Larry. <laughs> Um, I, d I think, I just think if I have the time to do something in that time, I'll do it and get it done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to save the stress. I think that'll change. I don't think, I think that'll change because I think the more you'll start to take on, that's not as possible to do. If you like, if you have my schedule, yeah, you can't have that. I can't prep next week. Now I've got five days of teaching before that for six hours a day when things to fill out like you it's so hard to be that f prepped you know what i mean for me it's mm. normally like the day before like or at least two days before it's so the busier you get it's harder to be prepared i think with college what everyone forgets is that you're told what to do everything mm. is done for you all you've got to do is show up you've just got to show up and put in the effort like besides homework obviously yes that takes time but again they're telling you what to do they're giving you a deadline life when it comes when it when the choices become your own that's when it gets really hard when mm. you leave college and you go am i going to train today am i going to train this week mm. how am i going to train this week college is a walk in the park that's that's the conversation we had because i was i was worried that when i left because i love a sense of routine yeah the structure someone's built someone's built the 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 journal of the structure for you and you just have to follow it exactly mm -hmm. and i was build like, your own that's 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 real hard work and make it happen afford it which was going to bring me into my kind of next question of kind of postgrad students how to become a good student then like how would you if you were to come out of college now how would you structure your life as a just out of college student I think the biggest mistake everyone makes when they leave college is they go, I'm a professional dancer now, I've trained. They go, what have you done? I've trained. Mm -hmm. And they think that means it's stopped. Right. No, I was in like training stopped. Gotcha. Yeah. They yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a graduate, I've trained. I've, d I've done my professional training. No, no, mm. now it starts. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. yeah. now it starts. Congratulations, you've learned to walk. Like, now it's time to learn to run. Because now you have to figure out how to do it and get paid for it. It's a whole different Now you have game. to figure out how to pay to do it and not have mummy and daddy pay for it or put it on a loan that got you or you through college. You have to make, you have to structure your own training. You haven't got the principal going, this is a good ballet teacher. I want you to learn from them. You have to go, what ballet teacher do I think is going to benefit me and I have to go mm. and train for? Mm. Like you have to go and invest your money in whatever classes you think are going to be benefit you for your journey. You have, you're, you're now taking full accountability and responsibility for your training. Whereas when you're a student, if your ballet teacher's shit, it's not on you. If, you're, if a teacher comes in and is shit, mm -hmm. it's not on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you end up being crap at it, you can be like, well, I had a crap teacher. There's always a, a but. Mm. There's always someone to throw it. Whereas now, it's on you. Yeah. Like, and I think it's really hard because every case is different. Every person is different. So like, if... Nina as a graduate, hers, you know, she can still train living at home with her parents because she can come on a Sunday to train with me. She has a studio not far from home she can use. To get to London isn't Mission Impossible. 
you know, it's, it is quite far and it's expensive, but it's not impossible. It's an hour and a half train journey. Like, but if you live in Scotland, mm. yeah. what does it look like then as a graduate? <laughs> like you might have a few dance classes around you, but how often are you going to go and get to learn from Cisco? Mm-hmm. How mm. often are you going to be able to travel down for an audition? Like, yeah. I think it all depends. Like, so I was speaking to a student on Sunday after the program and he was saying like, oh, I don't know what to do. Like, cause he lives like up North. And I was like, advert break. Yeah. I was speaking to a student on Sunday and he, he lives up North and he was saying like, what do I do when I, when I, you know, next after college, do I need to move to London? Or do I go home? And I was like, my biggest worry about when people go home and they're not in a place where they can get to London easily is what does their training look like? Mm-hmm. Normally, that means they're going to go back. Let's say you're from uh, Northampton. I don't even know if that's near London. or I don't think it is. I, just, <laughs> I said north. So let's just pretend somewhere far away. Yep. I say Blackpool. Yep. Mm-hmm. Say you're in Blackpool. London's a fucking bitch to get to if you're in Blackpool. Now you're probably going to go back and you're going to be the biggest fish in that tiny little pond. So what's your training going to look like? Who are you going to train with at home? Probably, well, you're probably the best in the room. Probably the you? best there. Yeah. So what's going to happen is you're probably going to end up teaching to make money, which is great. Then you're probably going to end up getting a stable teaching income. And then you're probably going to settle for being a dance teacher mm-hmm. because you're going to stop yeah. training. Are there people around you that are like-minded that are going to be like, yo, let's meet up and train. Let's go and jam in the studio. If there are, that's great. If there's not, that Get means away. you're on your own. Mm. That means you've removed the social aspect of your training. Like, mm. that makes it even harder. That brings up another obstacle. So then you're the best where you are, so there's no one to learn from. There's no one to train with. Then it's, okay, my only option is to travel to the nearest place. Like, or let's just use London. Because you could travel to Manchester. That's not far. Or Liverpool or something. But let's say you're going to travel to London. That's expensive. Mm. And <laughs> it's time consuming. So yeah. you're not going to travel down in the day, take a class and come back. You're doing once Because say week, your class finishes at 9, 10 o'clock, you can't get home. Yeah. So that's a hotel. Like all these obstacles come in the way. So like then if I was that person, if I was really taking it seriously, I would relocate to London. But if I lived in Swindon or Oxford or Bristol where you can get to London pretty easy, I don't think you have to move to London. I just think you have to be dedicated to going, I'm going to go and train on these days without mm-hmm. fail. Time yeah. and, and the best way to make yourself accountable of that is to book your travel in advance. Mm. That's and good. Pick a class I've in not advance. thought of that. So if you no. book your tickets in advance, you and you pay for it, you, know, you will not yeah. not go. Yeah, because you will not piss away fifty quid. Whereas really if you just quid. wake, <laughs> huh? and it really is fifty. Yeah, quid, yeah, you will not piss away fifty quid. Whereas if you just go, shall I go today? And then you look and go, oh, and the trains have gone up. Mm. It's expensive today. You're creating obstacles for yourself yeah. not to train. Like the best thing you can do is be like, right. I'm going to make sure I train every Thursday. Then I can go and take Cisco's new class at base at 4.30. And then I can <laughs> go, and then I can either do John Graham at Marco's class at 7 or I can do Lee's breaking class at 7. So and then I can do Bird Gang straight after it. You're welcome, guys. Um, or the <laughs> <Hay> studio. <laughs> and uh, if you book your train tickets in advance, say for the month, you mm. book them all. You set up a routine them. to win. You've set up a routine to win. You're not going to miss those, those things. You're not going to miss those trains. You're going to go and train. Yeah. Whereas if every Thursday you wake up and go, I'm really tired today. Oh, my friend said, do I want to grab lunch? Oh, and the train tickets are a bit more expensive. I'm going to grab lunch. Yeah. 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 Self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. No, really interesting take, actually. Do you know what I mean? It's, but if you, live in, if you live in London, you can just go, I'm going to take class now. Mm. There's no yeah. obstacle. You just go. The only downside is obviously London is super expensive. Yeah. And my biggest thing I say to everyone moving to London is go with some savings, like mm-hmm. get a part-time job for a bit before you go, like, but make sure you commit to going or set a date to go. Find someone to room share with. Yeah. Like if you can't find somewhere cheap enough to afford on your own, just room share. Mm. Find someone that you're close with or someone that you know you could live with. Like it's not ideal. No one wants to room share. Of course no one does. Everyone will be like, oh, I'm not sharing a room. Well, cool. That means you're lucky enough that you can afford to live on your own. Mm. But if you're not, like room share with someone find somewhere relatively cheap not in zone one or two live in <laughs> zone five or if you can find somewhere in zone one or two win win chicken dinner yep. but like and then again find a job that's going to help you train whether it be go-go dancing in a club podium dancing like it's good money it's at night so you can still rehearse in the day you can still take class until eight o'clock 
then you can go to work in the nights. You'll be tired as a bitch, but hey, you don't need to wake up till 12 o'clock the next day. You know what I mean? And you're going to make like 100 quid a night or whatever it is. You can yeah. get a job in a gym. That's going to benefit you because you're probably going to then get a free gym membership mm -hmm. or a job at Cobox where you're going to get free classes. All these things are going to help you because you can then stay fit and you can stay healthy and you're staying active. Don't go and get a job in like, uh, McDonald's <laughs> McDonald's or, or a waitressing job and no offense to anyone that got a waitressing job like I know you can make dope tips which if you can hack that that's good but the likeliness of you wanting to go and train after being stood up on your feet walking around serving dealing with people to be on your feet even longer yeah. is quite slim mm -hmm. like I think you want to choose your job that you're going to do wisely that's going to help you achieve your goals in your career or if you're really smart get a job at base or at a dance studio mm, yeah where you get to network with people. So I feel like to bottom line everything they've just said, the main thing for like a post-grad is creating an environment where you're more likely to win. A hundred percent. Is what I'm taking. Yes. Like make sure you're setting up everything you can to make it easier for you to win. As soon as you have an obstacle, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, my in-laws were looking at which gym to join the other day. They were like, there's Nuffield, which is a really, really nice gym it's 15 minutes away or there's the village which is a really nice gym as well but it's like 20 pounds more expensive a month but it's uh 10 minutes away and i was like okay and they're like but that one's cheaper i'm like okay it's further away which it's only five minutes but at peak time it's going to be more than five minutes mm -hmm. and also it gets busier because it's cheaper so if you think about it are you more likely to do the one that's near you and isn't busy that you can just get in and get yeah. out and it's not going to feel like a hassle and more expensive? Or are you going to do the one that's cheaper, further away, really busy and overcrowded and it's going to stress you out and make you feel like you don't want to go? Like, what's the point in paying for the cheaper one if you're not going to go at all? I'd rather pay yeah. for the more expensive one and actually use yeah. it. Because yeah, yeah. then you'll probably actually use it more because it is more expensive. Well, you're getting your money's worth because you're going. Yeah. What's the point in paying less and not turning up? Like, as soon as you create obstacles and make things difficult for yourself, she's a wrap. Like, yeah. you're less likely to do it. And I think that's the one thing is, like, you need to set up kind of like a, a bulletproof strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, that you're not setting yourself up to fail. Because if I was to move back to Scotland, or, like, if I'd stayed in Wales, like, when I graduated, if I went back home to Wales, I never would have made it. Mm. There's no way I would have traveled to London two, three times a week. Mm. Ever. Instead, I went and was broke as fuck in London. Like, and I worked on a Saturday and traveled to Bristol to teach. So my setup was I lived, I moved to, in a house with dancers. So I had a friend called David Ratcliffe. We weren't super close, but there was a room going. And I was like, you know what? Like, he's a working dancer. That's a good person for me to live with. Mm -hmm. Or he hangs around with working dancers. He just started working. That's a good person for me to be with. He's already further established or further ahead than I am. I'm putting myself in a networking position. I didn't like be like, I'm going to go and network. But I was like, this yeah. he's going to teach me who's who and what classes to go. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, I didn't know because we didn't have social media. I went and lived with him. It was relatively cheap. It was expensive for how broke I was. But on the scale of London, it wasn't like going to make me bankrupt. It would have because I had no money. But whatever. Um, and then I traveled back to Bristol on a mega bus every Saturday without fail and taught for 90 quid, which at the time to me felt like a lot of money. And mm -hmm. now I'm aware in our times it's not. But right then I'd guaranteed myself 90 pound income every week just for a Saturday. So my rent was paid. I'd paid my rent, they covered my mega bus travel. So no matter what, my rent was paid. And I had like 40 quid to play with or whatever. Then that's enough for me to eat. I lived on Weetabix and sausage rolls and I bought milk <laughs> or pasta, like really cheap yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, but it's food. Then all I had to do was figure out how I was going to train and travel. I used to get on the train at um, Ladywell Station instead of Lewisham because there was no gate. Because there's no barriers. <laughs> there's no barriers. Yeah. Then I'd get off at Waterloo instead of Charing Cross because there was no barriers. Yeah. And, if there was, and if there was people checking you for tickets, I'd just run. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd walk to Covent Garden and I'd stand outside Pineapple and just look through the window. And, eventually, and if I had money left to take class or I'd spend my six pounds to take one specific class, normally a dance to excess one, because I knew that's where all the working dancers were. Mm. So if I've only got enough to invest in one class, I'm going to make sure I'm with the people who are the best in the industry. So I did. Yeah. And then I'd just stand outside. And eventually, again, 
people would see you all the time and then they go what's your name what are you doing here why are you here and i'd be like oh i want to i'm just i'm a dancer and they're like you're taking class can't afford it oh come and take mine uh, are you sure yeah come and take mine for free and i go okay instead of free what if i press play and stop for you or yeah. what if i help you create do something? value what, what yeah. if there's something i can do to pay for it like that was shaney I don't know if ever like listeners you might might or might not who Shaney is that was him I would do that for him and then even then because I lived with David who was good friends with Sean Niles and Cisco then I got to meet and become good friends with all them I'd already met them from being in Dance to Excess but they weren't my friends but because I lived with someone who was friends with them then they became my friends then I created a good network of people mm. and then they knew I was skinned so Sean would be like all of our friends are taking class you can take class like don't worry like, I, I know one day you'll be good for it. Like, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And I made friends with them. And your friends want to see you succeed, so they help yeah. you. Like, I set myself up in a place where it was almost impossible to fail. Because I, I was constantly around dope people, and I just made it work. Mm. I think that's what's important as well, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Because I feel like when you're in college, you all want, you all want that dream. Mm. Whereas, like, when you come home... You've got people wanting to be like, I don't know, a Your doctor or like <laughs> yeah. working in an office. Like mm -hmm. they don't have the same yeah. dream that you have. So it's kind of like, and also they don't really understand it because our industry is very yeah, different. Like, they don't understand else. why you're working so hard to come home and cry. So, like, then, <laughs> <laughs> so then like that's also having an effect because you haven't got other people like encouraging you to be like, yeah, like do it because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. so uh, well, and there's no reference. There's no one at home for you to go like, they've done it, I can do it. Whereas if you're in London, if you go and take class, fingers crossed, there's like five people in the room that have made it and they're doing the same thing you are. So it gives you a bit of hope. Yeah. It gives you a glimpse. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like find a role model. Like f for me, like I, I just wanted to be a working dancer. So if I ever had the opportunity to be around working dancers without it being in a kiss assy way, I knew... I was in a good environment and there's probably something I could learn. You know what I mean? And then once I started working and being a working dancer, then I was like, okay, now who do I find to inspire me now in yeah. what specific ways? And then it became not so much about being a working dancer, but it, came, it became about being a specific kind of dancer or working on a genre that I loved. So when I wanted to be a working dancer, everyone was into jazz funk. I fucking hate jazz funk. But I knew I had to be able to do jazz funk if I wanted to be a working dancer. So I hung out with Cisco and all the kids and Sean Niles and I wore skinny jeans and high All Saints boots and dressed like they all did and went to the same clubs that they did even though I didn't like it because I was just trying to fit in. I was trying to find my place. I was trying to figure out if I could make this work. Then once I was established, in air quotes for people listening, don't really know what that means. But like, <laughs> like once I'd started working and I met John Graham, I was like, oh, this is I can I wear baggy trousers. We can talk about football. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, I can, I can be, I, we can talk about how dope Justin Timberlake is and not Lady Gaga. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I found, that someone that, I found someone that matched the things I like. Yeah. And then I got to pull away from the things that I didn't love so much. Not so much the people, they're still my friends. Mm. But I didn't have to, do that stuff to keep me in that circle because mm -hmm. I was already in the circle. I was already yeah. part of the circle. And I got to go off with my, to my half of the circle. The circle. <laughs> you know? No, not even other circle because they were still in the circle. Gosh, yeah. I just got to move to another part of the circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to put it. It was just how like to that. get in the circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Nice. So, Nina, what's your plan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what's your plan? <laughs> so, I think you've been on a bit of a, a journey over the last... Because you know, three to six months, especially like yeah. the last three months, you were staying at home waiting to go on tour. Mm. Yeah, like, I was. Then I wasn't. Then I was. Then I wasn't. <laughs> what's been your reaction, or what's been your takeaway from the last three to six months? <sighs> That's a big question, I know. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of people going into your situation, or who are currently in your situation. And the thing I admire about you is your ability to change your mindset. Um, so I think you're a really good person to ask about this. Thanks. Um, <laughs> um, it's, it is a really hard question because it's, what's been the struggle is knowing like if I need a backup and also I feel it's 
like now times are completely different bef- than before COVID. Like this has changed everything a lot mm-hmm. because like back then, like this, well, this pro- I wouldn't probably be in this situation. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't be in this situation. Mm. So it's also it's training my brain, even though I f- like, I feel I'm quite good at being resilient and like keeping going and like whatever happens happens and I carry on obviously um I don't know I know it's a super broad can question. you can you like expand a little bit so I think more on this question can I be like how honest can I be honest honest <laughs> so I I said to you before you left college that I suspect that you'll fall into a post-grad depression. Oh, yeah. Um, and what I meant by that is that your routine was taken away from you, and I know you're very routine-orientated. Um, so I felt like it was going to be hard for you to be to stay in the sta- same place and mindset. And then I think we did see that. Yeah. But then you pulled yourself out of it. I think it'd be interesting to dive into that switch between going from... Uh, routine to postgrad depression, let's call it that. Yeah. And then into a, I'm going to be super motivated space, and I'm going to get my my ass back into training again. I think, yeah, de- definitely my the first month after I graduated, I, I, I was honest. I was not. I was not in a good place. Did it you was, feel like you was, had no purpose? Yeah, it was really hard, and I also think. Did you just spill coffee all over my floor? <laughs> 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 yes, yeah, so now you can clean your floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's also that the change in environment, I think like when I was in Leicester, I was I was in my own accommodation. It was just me and then like all my mates and everybody else at college. Then I come home. It, it was a weird feeling when I was training, like my my home that felt home was Leicester. So, like, when I actually came home, it felt really weird. I think it's also because, like, people didn't really understand it. You're with, you're not with the, like, you're not with like-minded people. So then when I came home and I was like, oh, this is going to be permanent for a while. Like, it really hit me. And I was like, oh, I just, I just want to be surrounded by, like, everybody who gets it. Um, And then, like, obviously, like, not having a routine, I was like, right, I need to find, like where I can train back home like that I was finding that really difficult um but then obviously having some fabulous people around me you too oh um, look at that <laughs> smile <laughs> um I knew she meant me <laughs> <laughs> like you you kick my butts into gear like it's good to have people who are like no you're hold you accountable ex- which yeah. spoken about I, I, I want exactly. the best for you absolutely yeah mm. of course like because we're not here to like tell you you're amazing yeah we won't sugarcoat no and you are like, amazing but like like i like i'll tell you when you're not yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly and like that is that is what i need and i think like you blew smoke up my bum and was like come on mm. it's time we had a, we had a serious chat at one we point, did we? yeah jake told me you had a serious chat. <laughs> <laughs> and i said good <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also think it's like you have to be self-aware of what you're experiencing and then reach mm. out. Like someone might not kick you up the ass, but you can tell someone to kick you up the ass and go, mm. I need you to hold me accountable. I need you to make sure that I train three times a week, whatever, whatever. That like I think being self-aware, you can create that that relation with someone else to hold you accountable as well. Mm. Mm. Which is kind of what we have, right? Yeah. And it like, and then I started to think of, right, let's start putting steps in. What do I need to do? And then it was like every week, probably, probably say from like September, I was like, right, I'm looking up agents. I'm looking up auditions. Like every week I'm going to email an agency. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to. You've got a class to make some income to pay to fund your stuff now. Like, yeah, like start teaching, you know, it's like my my thing was research and I really enjoyed it. Like, I really enjoy looking for auditions, looking at choreographers, looking at different people. I follow tons of people on Instagram. It's, like, just just to see, like, the range of things that people do. And also, like, I also looked at different paths I could take within the industry that I didn't necessarily think of. Which, 
like has occupied my time like in between mm -hmm. which is really good to like broaden not broaden your goals but just to go okay i might not get to go on tour with thriller but i might get to work as a part-time gig backstage at mamma mia which is going to introduce mm. me to the choreographer which is going to like you know like you can find other ways in to those circles it doesn't always have to yeah. be on a dance basis like i know the most amazing dancer her name is megan toft if no one knows who she is you should know go and look her up she hasn't got a very big following she's uh, does company jinx um she is the most amazing dancer and she didn't become a working dancer but she started assisting people she started assisting on cruise ships and going on cruises and working and putting shows together. Like, was it probably the route that she wanted? No. Mm. But it's still a fucking incredible route. And actually, it's the part that people normally do after they perform. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, but because she didn't just go, no, I only want to dance. She was like, oh, I'll take that opportunity. Like, new things arise. Yeah. And then, who knows? Maybe now she'll get to choreograph a show and be in it herself. Yeah. And get to do the performing side. We don't know. But... To me, like that's about going, being open-minded enough and brave enough to jump off track, but still keep moving forwards. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean because it's not blocking your. It's not you have no, to other, other for groups. sure. Mm. Um, speaking of earlier on when we were talking about um, it just comes to someone come to my mind when we we're talking about like uh, what you can do as a graduate, how to like kind of set yourself up for success mm. um and being committed um and there's a my friend called taz who you know yeah uh call her my razzma taz she's the most hard-working girl i've ever met in my whole life i've never met someone so dedicated to their craft at being better like a training than her and i tell her all the time like it will happen because of how hard mm. you work mm -hmm. and you always show up it's just a matter of when mm -hmm. but the one thing that she does that's really good is instead of just going, I'm going to go and take class today in London, she books herself onto, um, and she's probably not even aware that she does this, but I'm aware that she does this. All her training is like companies. Mm. So she'll book onto Company Jinx or Runway or House of Jazz. Mm. So therefore, you're locking yourself into a commitment. She's paying mm. for a month's worth of training at a time. So she's locking herself into But she's also getting into the companies of amazing environment dancers oh amazing yeah. environment dancers. but yeah but you can do that you can be in in, com in the company of amazing dancers by showing up at base if you take camilla's class there'll be great dancers there but where she's paying for it in advance like she's signing up to a four-week program mm. as opposed to a one-hour program yeah, yeah a yeah. one-hour class she's committing herself to something it's like when you want to get a gym membership like or you want to get a pt like you'd be better off buying 10, 10 sessions, sessions instead of one yeah because yeah, yeah. if you buy one you're probably only ever going to do one absolutely if you buy 10 you're yeah. going to do 10 like it's the same with dance training i think like if you pay for a month's worth of training you're probably going to use that month's worth of training so it's going to benefit you so much more 100 percent. but I, I, again kind of going back to the networking thing is if you're seeing the same people for four weeks straight you're more likely to walk away with a, a relationship and a an ability to yeah. that work with those people for sure sweet sweet should we leave it there for the day yeah. that's a wrap bitches that's a wrap bitches thanks for joining us i'm mr bull change this is gibson underscore media underscore <laughs> and this is nina hayward underscore harwood hayward 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 <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha. yeah peace out thanks for joining any questions hit us up thanks for coming nina no, thank always. you. Always a pleasure. That's con <laughs> <laughs> casting couches. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Peace.